welcome to the essence of knowledge satsang today we are going to start with uh, two tests first is test of amit and then there will be test of anshu kumar thank you uh, guruji um, greetings to all the fellow speakers um, just going to start with my questions it is i was feeling like the school exam which i used to give earlier i uh, will try my best so the first question is uh, why is knowledge so difficult but necessary um knowledge is difficult because it you will gain the knowledge on um deliberate attempts learning um, understanding things looking at them as they are um why it is necessary because it will help to um get rid of ignorance and live in the natural state and it will reduce the suffering so that is the way of life uh, second question is how do we arrive at a certain knowledge on the path of knowledge so um arriving at knowledge is the only way is a direct experience experiencing the things um as they are and then um uh, validating them with the logic uh, why it is in such and such manner so those are the only ways um to arrive at a certain knowledge on the path of knowledge the third question is what is the difference between knowing a name or concept and having knowledge so knowing knowing a name or concept um so name or concept is uh what is perceived by senses or what is stored uh, in the memory um so when all those points are connected in the memory we have a knowledge about that thing uh so that is uh, that is called know- knowing uh, and uh, knowledge is by uh, direct experience so when you directly experience certain things then you will have a knowledge about that thing and then you can also validate it using the logic as i said earlier uh so the fourth question is how is logic justified as the means of knowledge um so logic helps to validate uh, whether what we are observing or what we are concluding is correct or not um, so it can either be true or not true so that's why uh, logic is important to uh, justify even though uh, the direct experience we have of a certain thing but uh, as we know like experiences again are illusion so that's why uh, logic is important to validate uh, what we are uh, experiencing in order to have the knowledge uh, fifth question is is existence empty or does it resemble something which is empty so um, existence is everything and uh, whatever we can um think of or is even beyond that like whatever is around or whatever is is existence uh and its nature is emptiness uh, so it is not uh, right to say it is it resembles something which is empty because there is nothing other than existence whatever is is existence and um, that existence is empty it has no form it has no space it uh it cannot be in time so it is uh, irrespective of anything in which we can uh which uh, confine existence and so it is not correct to say that it resembles uh, something which is empty but yes existence is everything and the true nature is emptiness um if it experiencer is the essence of everything so why can't everything experience such 
as a rock or object. Um, so, if we are saying that why can't one experience all, all the things such as rocks or objects or other bodies, it means that uh, we are thinking here that the experiencer is confined to one particular body. Using that body, uh, experiencer can experience all the things such as uh, rocks or other objects or the body. But uh, it's the other way around. The experiencer is not bound by time or space uh, or by any other object. It is all over. It is just like uh, uh, what examples we have been taught in this course is uh, ornaments are form of gold. So uh, waves are formed from water and uh, pots and other utensils are formed from clay. So exactly, uh, essence is, uh, or the existence is the basic essence everywhere and all objects, including this body, which I call, call myself as I, and that rock which I see or other objects I see, they are having the same essence. So that's why uh, it is not correct to say like, or we cannot, uh, one cannot, uh, it is not right to say that I cannot, why I cannot experience other things. So those are just the forms and the basic essence is the same in all the, uh, in everything we see. Why do we need awareness in, in daily life? Uh, awareness is important uh, to get rid of ignorance. Um, we will know uh, the wrong understandings we have about things which is bringing in the suffering and that will help to lead the blissful and correct life uh, as well and uh, if one finds that path and if it works for themselves um, then they can also uh, 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 walk on that path uh, and it, it helps others as well because if a uh, person is not in conflict with himself, he will not be in conflict with others. So uh, in a way that helps others indirectly as well. Uh, question eight, give a few examples of experiences which are not true, but must be taken as truth. Uh, there are ample examples. Uh, whatever appears in our day-to-day -day life it is not true in the sense like it is not what it appears to be but it is essential for uh, living day-to-day -day life just to give an uh, example like mornings afternoon evening uh, even though we look at it as if like sun rises and sets um, it is not true like uh, Earth is revolving around the sun. That's just one example, but anything we see uh, or experience, uh, even like we growing up or uh, we looking at the things like the example which Guruji has given multiple times, looking at the tomato, um, we see that it is red, but it is not really red. But to live a day-to-day -day life, we have to assume things and abide by it. So, there could be many examples given, but for the uh, in interest of time, I would like to stop here uh, with those examples. Uh, question number nine, which experience is most likely the experience of oneness? So oneness cannot be experienced. Uh, it is something, uh, if, if it can be experienced, uh, it is, then it will uh, not be something which we say is uh, true or uh, it would be illusory. So uh, experience cannot be, uh, sorry, oneness cannot be experienced. So it is uh, difficult to, not difficult, it is impossible to say like, uh, uh, how is the experience of oneness? It could only be understood. And as we have learned that the uh, oneness is uh, for the sake of, understanding that it uh, primarily divides into two forms in duality 
uh, one of the experiencer and the other is of experience. Uh, so experience keeps changing and is illusory and experiencer is like a screen on which the play happens or the free film is played. And the last question is what can be done to make this experience of life a better experience? Uh, something like path of knowledge uh, definitely uh, would help to get rid of illusions and to lead the uh, right path and also uh, to achieve that bliss or ananda which is said in Hindi which is uh, irrespective of uh, joy and sorrow. So uh, that would be that could be done to have a uh, better understanding of life. Thank you. Okay, very good. And you get uh, seven out of ten, which means you have passed the test. Now you will go to the step number four. Only one answer was wrong, and few answers were half right. So we are going to discuss the answers. First question for Amit was why is knowledge so difficult but necessary? So he got 0.5 half marks because probably the part about necessity was correct. But knowledge is not difficult. Only the letting go of our concepts and beliefs that is difficult. Knowledge is very very easy and the whole struggle is to let go of that which we believed blindly. This must be the uh, correct answer according to me but his uh, effort was also very good so he gets half marks number two how do we arrive at certain knowledge on the path of knowledge again he got half here because he said uh, through direct experience and logic yes that is that gives us very certain knowledge but uh, in the program we have discussed this thing, how to arrive at the means of knowledge that is the final conclusion that uh, experience and logic will give us some knowledge but how did we arrive there? We found out what is certain, what causes certainty and what is reliable. We, all this analysis was done there and only after that we reached this conclusion. So that should be mentioned that uh, it is independent of time, it is independent of place and uh, does not depend on a specific uh, system and like this. It is reliable, it does not change. So we found some means of knowledge and then we reduce them to two and some more things are necessary to arrive at certainty that is precise definitions and pure language there are more things but they are dependent on person like good intelligence desire to know and all the qualities of the seeker and a teacher guru because the teacher finds out the mistake and if there are any mistakes in your knowledge teacher can pinpoint them so the knowledge becomes more certain and certain so this is the whole process of the path of knowledge only how to arrive at certain knowledge this is the focus of path of knowledge the knowledge itself is not important because you know that there is no knowledge ultimately ultimately we don't get any knowledge so number three what is the difference between knowing a name or concept and having knowledge his answer was correct so in one line you can say that knowing the names or concepts can be called information but it can be turned into knowledge by proper experience and number four how is logic justified as a means of knowledge and this was the only wrong answer so we did not get any numbers here how is logic justified as a means of knowledge we have tried to do that in the program and uh, that is the justification is that uh, experience itself will provide us positive knowledge experience provides us positive knowledge and then the logic is applied on that to know the truth of the experience. This is the whole process. The experience when it is measured by logic will be called knowledge. Now you can see the meaning behind the symbol of balance scale. You can see the in the courtrooms also there is a statue of a goddess holding the balance. She is measuring. It is a measure of evidence. So without logic, uh, we do not call it evidence. It say, remains an experience, like the experience of a newborn child. It is having, the child is having all the experiences that we are having. But is there any knowledge? Because knowledge is defined as 
connections between experiences in the memory how to form these connections only logic or intelligence you can also say intelligence is needed so without logic if the connections are formed it becomes ignorance this is the definition of ignorance that wrong connections between experiences is called ignorance so this is our technical definition of knowledge and ignorance here so without logic there is no knowledge then secondly knowledge is knowledge simply my uh, mind created is it, is it man made arbitrary system and again it is said in the program that no logic is based on experience only logic is based on experiences if it is not based on experience it is not called sound logic so ultimately everything boils down to experience but there is a way to obtain knowledge from experience that is called logic that which is based on our past experiences so it is a difficult question yes very difficult question and there is endless debates in the scriptures about whether to justify whether the logical analysis is justification or not so those who are interested they should go and read all those books about logic why it was accepted on the path of knowledge as a means of knowledge we have simply tested it in our program our program is very basic so number 5 is ex- existence empty or does it resemble something which is empty so full marks his answer was correct then the nature of existence is emptiness there is no substance there it is not made up of anything so sometimes people think that uh, it is a metaphor it looks like something which is empty people will say a black which is nothing a cloud darkness night sky space and no 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 these metaphors are totally wrong the ultimate emptiness is existence which is only me so his answer was correct you can say emptiness is name of existence emptiness is another name shunyata is another name of existence that does not mean it is not there that simply means it is not to be assumed as an object or something some place any any kind of experience anything it should not be put into any kind of category this is the meaning of emptiness so number 6 if experiencer is the essence of everything why can't everything experience such as rocks or objects now this question is very logical because we have se- said that experiencer is omnipresent it is present everywhere so why only humans experience why not table chairs and their ex- their essence is also the same so he tried amit tried and he got half marks there and uh, there the problem is very obvious the problem is in the question there is a assumption in the questions question that rocks or objects can experience something why can't everything experience like rocks it is the question is asking this the answer is only experiencer can experience not objects even humans cannot experience anything that is simply mind and body machine humans do not experience they are simply being experienced they are experiences which come and go so rocks objects they are appearances in existence which come and go only experiencer can experience anything and obviously it can experience the rocks and other objects how through proper medium there needs to be a medium for meaningful experience and that medium is senses so once the structures they keep appearing in the existence uh, and they appear in the background of this essence which is the experiencer but until and unless the structures become so complex that they can limit the possibilities in a meaningful way nothing is known it is not that nothing is experience the experience is simply form of the existence the experience does not mean objects or people it is simply the forms taken by the existence so if the form is so sophisticated that there is sense there it is sensitive then a meaningful experience appears that has happened in the case of organisms humans animals plants so senses are needed otherwise there is a raw experience which is not known a memory is needed so that knowledge forms and then only we can say that i know i can experience so this is also a very very difficult question it's a very difficult question and the ma- main uh, um, you can say misunderstanding in this question is that the rocks and objects have their own experiencer have the capability which provides an experience is just like human experiences and that is not true isn't it that's not true. even two humans do not experience i mean if you assume that they are experiencing 
the experience is different so as complicated structure becomes the experiences become meaningful and they are known so everybody should think about this thing it is an important question number 7 why do we need awareness in daily life he got half marks the thing is um, it is not needed if you are happy if you are doing good then it is an optional thing like we say we do not have any practices here on the path of knowledge but this awareness practice is given just to make it a little bit better just to make your life a little bit better and so that you don't forget the knowledge so that is why this re- this recommended awareness practice otherwise it is not uh, needed but yes it is recommended and uh, why it is recommended he told some advantages of being aware so that's why i got 0.5 otherwise knowledge is enough and remembering it is awareness so the awareness is natural consequence of remembering who you are do we need it as another job or another thing or another habit that is a subjective preference if you like it do it if you don't no need number 8 give a few examples of experiences which are not true but must be taken as truth so we got full marks yes almost every experience is taken as truth although all of them are false so major examples are world body and mind <laughs> actually that is a whole of the experience but they are taken as truth there can be some experiences like dreams or experiences of other states of the mind experiences after death and so on which people dismiss as false they do because you see not useful in survival that is not useful in survival your dreams and so on your imaginations so safely you can assume they are not true but can you assume that uh, your job is not true your relatives are not true your body is not true the food is not true it will it will be very dangerous for this creature to assume like this so it is taken as truth so in one line you can say everything that helps in survival of the organism is taken as truth we give it a name we say it is um, transactional truth in english transactional truth not ultimate truth the ultimate truth is totally useless in our day to day life number 9 which experience is most like the experience of oneness and he got whole marks again and oneness is not an experience yes correct oneness is not an i hope he said like this because i could not hear properly but uh, hopefully he was on the point here that uh, we should not confuse oneness with an experience this experience means already two so already dual number 10 what can be done to make this experience of life better experience and it is uh, totally now personal opinion here so i gave him full marks uh, the standard answer is it is already good it is already whole and complete when it is your choice you can do something to make it a better experience it's already false so there is good false and there is bad false you can try so i gave him full marks but uh, the, there is no right answer for this so this is my own uh, attempt at answering hopefully it was helpful for everybody and everybody should uh, meditate on these questions do not simply think of the answers as true answers and false answers a correct or incorrect answer do not memorize try to know why these ans- questions are there what should be their answer that should, that is your contemplation so this was amit's test suraj has a question i am practicing awareness but it is not going well not able to maintain it so there is sense of failure and again the questions and doubts rise i have explained in detail in weekly report how to deal with it. yes i saw your report and uh, i can, i do not understand what uh, what problems are you facing which question and which doubt are you facing can you give me one example of the doubt or question because in your report also you have written the same thing but there are no questions there that's why i said you should discuss it here is there anything specific which uh, is your question which is not answered by the program so if you are not able to maintain awareness that's not a big problem but if there are doubts and questions they need to be resolved first then we can think about awareness because with with questions and doubts obviously there is no chance of awareness so how to deal with it you should clarify your doubts clear your doubts get the answers to your questions and the satsang is only for that satsang is there to ask your questions clear your doubts 
because we have tried to answer everything in the program but dear sometimes some questions remain okay first question is how do i know even i am in awareness i am doing it correctly so awareness is defined as knowledge that i am the experiencer not any experience not body mind thought emotion object if this remembrance is there most of the time then we say i am aware and how to know if i am doing it correctly it is not something which can be done it is not an action it is simply remembering what i am if you can remember who you are you are doing it correctly you will forget sometimes who you are because something more important comes up which is related to survival jobs or people or situations so no problem there 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 we are too busy to remember who am i am but once the situation is uh, resolved when the situation is over when once your work is over you are free to remember again remember that time this is called a broken awareness and broken is when you don't forget when it becomes your second nature but uh, it is not possible for a newcomer the newcomer is not expected to have this kind of control so it's not a problem if you forget it's not a problem if you are busy in daily jobs daily work daily routine daily struggle whenever you get time remember who you are now the another question will be then how will i progress if like th- it can continue like this for whole of your life but don't worry maybe you will get you will remember it for 5 minutes in one day next week you will see that these 5 minutes are 10 minutes now you will remember who you are for 10 minutes next week you will see that the, the duration is increasing now after one month or two months you will see that you can hold this awareness in doing simple jobs like watching videos like while in satsang because we in satsang we talk about nothing but who am i is no other topic here experience are only that is the essence so listening to satsang listening to videos reading books or even talking to somebody you can see that this mind body is doing its job every day work actions and you are the observer you are the witness this is like it takes only one second to remember like this so this duration will go on increasing you must take interest in it that is the practice the practice is not forcing it or doing it by some method there is no method to do it so you will know you are in awareness if you can remember that you are the witness how to do it correctly there is no need to do it it is simply remembering remember whenever you can take interest in it that is the only method or make your intention very very strong that i will not forget i will not drop into my habitual behavior habitual state of darkness not knowing ignorance this should be a strong intention so that can be the answer to how to do it but you can see it is not a job it is a state of being state of mind okay, suraj is saying i am aware about three that i have to stabilize awareness and my one month is almost over and that is also one of the reason that there is worry become aware of worries who is worried immediately see it especially when you are worrying about awareness you should recall that this is only thought in the mind my experiencer is not worried and when there is thought that the awareness is not stabilizing become aware of the thought also that the mind is thinking that it is not stabilizing you said i am aware about three what is three three days three minutes what is the meaning of three so do not three months so no problem you have whole lifetime to do the practice there is no time limit see the three months is spent in teaching you what is awareness it is the training time you need to do it forever for this lifetime for all the lifetimes there is nothing else to do on the path of knowledge there is nothing to know nothing to research nothing to do nothing to find simply remember or you can check it again and again that whether the knowledge is correct or not as soon as you do- have a doubt get the doubt cleared you can get it cleared through your direct experience but if you cannot come in such some if it is very urgent send me the message send me email so 3 months we do not expect the student will become stabilized in awareness the, the student will have unbroken awareness in 3 months it is impossible i also don't have it and i don't even care about it just like i said in one of the questions why do we need awareness in daily life i i said we don't need it if you are happy in your daily life why do we need another extra job another extra practice so when it is needed it is there that much you need to ensure you are doing something you are going to do something which is uh, important 
or you are taking a decision which is important and just ensure that it is not coming from your old habits old ignorance that much everybody can manage i think i try to do it like this that uh, suppose let's say you want to change job or you want uh, something in your life you want more money you want more objects and they taking these decisions requires awareness it is needed if it is not done then the decision will happen because of your tendencies not because of awareness and if you take the decision in darkness it can be good decision no problem at all it can be bad decision that is also no problem because you will learn from it mistakes happen then you become aware that this mistake happened i was not aware that time so like this progress will happen automatically now next time you take a decision there will be awareness because you remember now you learnt this thing it's better to take all the decisions in complete awareness and then you can progress forward you start applying the same thing for unimportant things also like which video i want to watch there is a cartoon video there is a violent video there is a video from some guru there is video for news now here also your awareness will be useful otherwise you will take a decision based on your old tendencies they will repeat and they will become stronger or in awareness mostly the decision that is taken is that i don't want to watch anything nothing is important peace of mind is more important or i need information so i want to watch this thing. something like this will be there it will not be habitual and that will dissolve this old tendency because you know the nature of tendencies the more you repeat them the stronger they become they don't go away especially if it is a bad tendency which is not good for our daily life or the progress of spiritual progress whatever it is so this this is a process of purification like this it is called purification that every decision every action is happening in awareness it will not happen instantly in few days forget about it it's not possible it will take many years to reach there that every action is happening in awareness that means your death will happen in awareness and the next birth will not happen because nobody will take the, the, this decision to take birth if they are in awareness and that is the end of cycles of death and birth that is the end of all suffering nirvan will you reach that there in 3 months impossible impossible so i am not discouraging i am giving you the uh, simple truth you see do not hold this kind of belief that it is magic it should happen in 2 2 months 3 months <laughs> if you can understand what is awareness in 3 months it will be a big achievement if you can get a glimpse of it that look if i am aware if i am in knowledge if actions are happening in knowledge there is certain kind of outcome if they are happening in darkness there is another kind of outcome you can compare like this your life and then you will obviously everybody will prefer awareness any intelligent person will prefer awareness so this is the practice if you have any doubts any questions regarding the path of knowledge that this knowledge is not correct here i have doubt they need to be cleared first only then you can start practicing before that what are you practicing nothing what will you remember doubts questions not knowledge so know very certainly who you are and remember it whenever you can this is the whole practice suraj is saying some decision do not to go as per our wish how can we accept it see decision you can take as per your wish the outcome will not be as per your wish probably want to say that that the consequence of your action is not in our control what else you can do <laughs> what else you can do this is the law the karmic law says that every action has a consequence and it will not be in your control only sometimes it will be in your control that gives us this illusion that i am in control this is an illusion nothing is in our control this human being cannot control anything because it is another event in the greater mind universal mind it does not control anything nobody controls anything so how do i accept it accept it as knowledge see that it is your belief that everything should go as per my wish no it will never what happens is we do an action and the consequences are there now we simply experience them if it is a good consequence it will produce happiness if it is not a good consequence it will produce suffering this is most natural Ex- expecting that all my decisions all my actions will produce happiness is not knowledge actually is not intelligent take the decision and then be ready for any kind of consequence we you cannot do anything else there is no other option for human beings also remember that i am not the doer 
I am the witness of all decisions. I am the witness of all actions. And I am the witness of all consequences. I am unaffected by everything. And this will bring some kind of acceptance. That I am not the one who decided. I am not the one who is now getting the consequences. And you should remember this not only in cases of bad decisions, bad consequences, bad actions. Remember this in cases of good decisions, good actions, good consequences. Make your suffering and happiness equal. This is called equanimity. This is also possible only if you are aware, only if you are in remembrance, in knowledge. What will happen? You All your suffering will disappear. But all your happiness will also disappear. Which you thought it was my decision, it was good decision, it produced good consequences. That is ego. The ego will disappear. There is no happiness, there is no suffering. There is only peace, which we call bliss. So your state will become more and more blissful, balanced. It is called equanimity in English. And in Sanskrit, we call it Samadhi. But there are so many mean, meanings of Samadhi nowadays. So we don't call it Samadhi. We call it uh, awareness only, Sakshi Bhav. So there is still no awareness in Suraj. It looks like you are thinking that I am deciding, I am doing, it is my wish. Our wish, these words, they all point to ignorance. Sometimes we say like this, it was my wish, it was my uh, decision, it was my action. But they are all understood as false appearances. We are talking in, in the domain of illusion here when we say like this. When, when we are in the domain of awareness or you can say knowledge, then we should never use these kinds of words. What words we use, the decisions happen and the consequences happen. The desires happen. The wish, not wishing, it happens. The not accepting or accepting also happens as a reaction of the mind. This, these sentences, sentences, they show knowledge. So sometimes we use the language of ignorance because we are talking in the worldly matters. On the topic of worldly matters, I also say I decided this thing, I'm doing this thing now, and this thing failed, this thing was successful. It is all garbage. Nothing like this happened. This is the worldly language, or we say transactional language. But uh, when we are talking about practices, awareness, knowledge, well, our language is totally different. So I'm not recommending that you use the lang uh, language of knowledge in your daily life because people will brand you as uh, crazy. They will not understand what you are saying. That does not mean that you don't remain in knowledge. While speaking the language of ignorance, you can still be in knowledge. You can still see that these things are coming out of mind. These actions are happening through the body. Then there will not be any question of acceptance or non-acceptance. It is simply happening. Yes, the body and mind will react to it, which is necessary, isn't it? If something fails, we need to fix it. We need to correct it. It is not bad. Awareness does not mean that we stop action. It simply means that we allow all actions in awareness, in light, light of witness, light of experiencer. It is very, very simple. There was a question, what is the easiest thing? The easiest thing is truth. And to remain in truth is also very easy. The problem is false. It, it causes a lot of confusion. So our whole practice is to see the false nature. That's all. Allow it. You should not stop it. Nobody is there to stop it. The thought that I should stop all this, you know, that is also a thought. That is also ego. Awareness does not mean stopping something. Sometimes you can take a totally wrong decision in complete awareness. It is possible. Awareness does not guarantee good decisions. Awareness does not guarantee right actions. It simply guarantees that you will learn. You will remain unaffected by whatever happens. Suppose I don't know about something, I can take wrong decision there. My general knowledge, if not correct about something, investing money or I don't know about a person, I, I decide incorrectly about that person. It, it happens all the time. So is it uh, an aware decision? No, it is also aware. There is awareness while taking the decision, but it was wrong. So no, not a big deal. We learn. Next time we take correct decision, remain unaffected by what happened. So this is a very simple practice. The problem is people make it complicated. I have given some attention practices, but attention is not uh, something which belongs to path of knowledge. So attention practices for those who cannot even listen to their guru, who cannot, who cannot even sit silently for five minutes. It will not bring awareness. It will make you peaceful. What is important is to drop all that is unnecessary. All the practices are totally unnecessary. And so nothing is included there. 
try to do everything in awareness see if you're dropping or everything and if everything is that is unnecessary is being dropped that is progress that is how we know that we are progressing so here i want to uh, stop we'll continue next week in our weekly meetings thank you everybody for attending today's satsang